Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano. And this video will be a tutorial and a playthrough for the final set of exercises in this book, Boris Berlin's Essential Daily Exercises for Piano. And what we'll do is we'll go through each exercise. Sometimes I'll do a side view. Some will be closer, some will be farther away. I'm gonna do most of the demonstrations with my right hand. And then after I've gone through the whole tutorial, then I'll do a playthrough of the whole set using both hands. Exercise one for the independence of fingers. This is the hardest one in the book for sure. So in this one, we're focusing on firm bridge. It's gonna be played on the finger pads. And the way I like to set up for a firm bridge is kind of standing up so you put your wrist way down low and then you're gonna find that grip point with your finger pads. You don't wanna to go too far. You really wanna grip this. And then on this one, you wanna make sure that you're not letting these cave in. There's so many elements for this that at first you might just be doing the best you can to just get your fingers to hold down. This exercise has two parts. So part one, you're holding down finger two. I'd like you to think down, up, up, down, up, up, down. So another thing you're striving for is to play the notes that are in groups of two together at the same time. So you might see how those are kind of rolling. So you're gonna strive for them to be same time. Like I said, very difficult things to work on. Now part two is extremely difficult. It is so hard to hold that third finger down. So the technique I want you to think about is we're gonna have third finger, down and we're going to be pivoting back and forth. That should make it feel a little bit easier. My left hand really struggles with this exercise. Let's give it a try. So we're going to put finger three down and you're going to pivot around finger three. So first one and four go down, then pivot and pivot and pivot. Pivot, pivot, Do your best on this one. We're striving for firm bridge, firm first knuckle, and intervals striking at the same time. Part one is down, up, up. Part two is pivoting. Here's exercise one side view. What I'd like you to see is that the wrist starts underneath, setting up, finding the grip point. Part one, put finger two down. Part two, we're pivoting back and forth horizontally. All right, moving ahead to number two for relaxation. We've done this throughout the whole book. We're using fingers two and three. You're gonna use the whole finger pad and it's a gentle roll up, one motion, down, up. So you're playing the second note on the up. You're not playing down, down, up. It's a roll up. So you'll see this from the side view and it will be a little bit more clear. The second note of each measure, you want to melt away a little diminuendo. So we have down, roll up. Exercise two, side view. I just want you to see the one motion. We're not doing two motions, we're doing one. We have got down, roll up, down, roll up. Hand. So exercise three for stretching, we're working with this fifth, fingers five and three. Notice my thumb's way out here. That's totally okay for this. We're trying to be as gentle as possible with this. And sometimes we just have to alter where our hands are on the keys. My hand is going to be at a U shape, not straight like this, slight U shape. So we get position and then just roll over. You'll feel your grip point and then you're going to just gently roll up finger four. Find it, touch, gentle. You might feel some tension in finger two as you do this, but the more you do it, the better you'll get. And then part two, basically we're taking a C7 chord and playing all the inversions of it. 
So we're gonna roll up, gentle roll up, big roll up. Some of the great composers had stretching exercises kind of like this one, where you're in a position, either this dominant position or a diminished chord, just moving through the different parts of it. So number three, please take it slowly. <clears throat> exercise four for the passing of the thumbs. This is a fantastic scale exercise. I just love this one. So we've been working very hard through the whole book getting the thumb through the tunnel to its next position for the scale. So this is just building on that technique. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna be heavy on the accents and then light on the triplets. This will be played more on the tips portion of the finger, so the top of the finger pad. So when we stand up into position, we're gonna stand up to a little bit higher grip point, but you don't wanna go too far. You don't want your hand to cave in like that. Just Go until you still feel a grip, which allows the thumb a lot of area to cross under. So we're gonna have down, then light, down, then light, down, back down, crossing with four first, then crossing with three. Let's do that one more time. Thumbs going under the side tunnel. Exercise four, you get set a little bit higher so you can get that thumb underneath. All right, exercise five for octaves. This exercise is pretty fun. It goes over a couple things. I know you're not gonna be able to see my left hand pinky, which is okay. I just want you to see the interplay between the hands. Part one is wet, part two is dry. What I mean by that, part one, we've got these overlapping eighth notes. See how the sound continues? Part two, taking turns. Together. Let's do that one more time, and I just want you to focus on excellent rhythm. So each hand is offset by a 16th note. We're concentrating on wet and dry. In the wet, we're gonna have a little bit of gentle roll-ups. I always think it's kind of like a cat doing that thing that cats do when they're purring. And then the second part is a quick snap of the wrist moving up and down. Here we go. Exercise six for trills. I love this exercise. It's just a very simple exercise. Both hands will have a firm bridge. They'll be playing on the tip portion. And with this one, you're gonna just feel the downs whenever you have an accent. If you need to, go ahead and practice the hands separately first before you do the whole exercise. But right now, I'm just gonna demonstrate it slowly with hands together. So we're gonna go down. You really want to have the notes in between the octaves be super light. Things to watch out for in this, you might feel some tension from the fingers that aren't playing. Your fingers might not play together. So if you're finding your hands aren't together, just see if you can play from here to here and stop with them absolutely together. And then you can go through each position. Stop. So with that position, what's the issue? The issue is that finger four is pretty weak. So then you can isolate that and just focus on, is my finger four really playing on the tip? Is the rest of my hand flailing in the air? And then you do the next one. Same thing here, finger four is weak. This should be okay in the right hand. Notice my left hand finger choose going up in the air and then so forth. 
So figure out what's going on in each group and then you can put them all together. Exercise seven for repeated notes. We can do it two different ways. Way number one is your hands making a little circle coming back down on each first group of four or you play four, three, two, and then one. A little bit different spots on the keys. Now this one, we're moving in the interval of a fifth. It's a little more spread out. So what you need to consider is the distance now to the next position. So we're gonna do this two ways. We'll do the circle way first, so the hand's a little straighter. Four, three, two, one, down. Four, three, two, one, down. I think that feels pretty good. Now, if we do playing the different spots on the key, again, you might need to be aware of both of these techniques depending on what the repertoire requires. So it won't always be one way or the other. So let's try the other way. Now your hand's a little bit more to the side. Your wrist is quite high. So when you get to finger one, you're gonna slightly open the hand up to get the new position and so forth. Practice both of those so you get familiar with both techniques. Exercise seven, side view, doing the little circles first. Or starting the hand a little bit more side and then opening kind of a zigzag. Here's number eight for double thirds. This is an excellent exercise to practice. I'm actually practicing some double thirds in a Mozart piece right now, and it has this exact fingering, so this would be a great warm up for that. At any rate, we want our hand in a nice bridge, firm bridge position. We're gonna be playing in the middle portion of the finger pads and just getting familiar with this fingering. So we're gonna start with five, three, and then you're gonna kind of roll over the fifth finger to grab two, one. Instead of scooting over one thing at a time, you roll your hand over, grab it, and then same thing on the way down, pivot over the thumb. One thing I'd like you to focus on, which helps with legato, is holding on to one of the notes of the third a little bit longer. So with this first one, we're gonna hold on to the finger five as we pivot over the top. Then we go two, one, we're gonna release the thumb, keep the two down a little bit longer. And then on this one, I think best to release the thumb. Hold on to two a little bit longer, hold on to the thumb. Okay, so roll up, over, over. Same thing here as we go down, it's gonna feel similar. When you have the pivot at the bottom, we're going from three, one, two, five, three, before we had two, one, five, three, this is three. So again, pivot over the thumb, and then back over. So roll ups, going down, part two. And then over. Exercise eight, I want you to see how you hold one note over. So we've got five, three. We're gonna hold two. We're gonna hold three. Hold four. Hold three. Hold one. Just gonna slightly overlap. We're just getting used to different positions. So as we've done before, we're rolling up in between the positions, just grabbing them. I like to grab this one with two and three, just kind of feel where that is. Let that be my anchor. The other fingers kind of squish down, although you want to try to get them all at the same time. Then we have down, up, 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 down, up, up. So we're doing this cadence, and that's the fingering we would use. 
Okay, here is number 10 for the five fingers. This exercise is for passing the energy quickly from the fingertips. Now this is this position is going to be compact and spread out. So it's a little bit more difficult. You have to kind of roll to the top with this one versus some of the other ones where you're just working a lot of fingers back and forth. We're working on an extended C chord with finger three up here. We're gonna think down, touch, down, touch, down, touch, down, touch. Now, take a look at my hand. I'm not stretching it out like this. When I wanna play it really fast, I'm gonna keep that U shape here, and really play on the tips. And then the second part is just rolling through a C second inversion chord. So down, touch, down. So you really wanna be on the tip and very light with finger four. Okay, here's number 11 for skips. And with this one, normally I just do it down an octave, but what I want you to feel is where you're actually playing, which is reaching your hand out the piano. So this is just a quick touch. You're gonna anchor here on this high C and moving your hand, getting used to the distance as you get closer together. So first is two octaves, a little less. And this should be played very light, almost like you might mess up. Here's exercise 12 for arpeggios. This one is hard. I'm just gonna say it, it's hard. So we're doing a G arpeggio, but within the G arpeggio, we're adding these passing tones. I'd like you to think about this arpeggio. First of all, you're gonna do the best you can with the fingering, okay? It's hard. You got this hard cross under with four and one where you've got to open back out. I think it's best if you can think of it using some dips and using some over the top. So we're gonna start straight. One, two, three, wrist, hand kind of straight. Then we're gonna dip a little bit for the cross under. Straight, dip. Then on the descent coming down, Instead of coming under, we're gonna go over, straight, down, over, straight. So straight, little dip, straight, little dip, over, straight, down, over. When you do this, that's fast. all the work we've been doing with a thumb under on those passing of thumbs things. So do your best on this arpeggio. Part two is kind of a stretching exercise that uses the different parts of this arpeggio. So it's pretty hard to play that fifth at the same time. So I want you to do this a little bit slow and do your best. So we have down, touch, down, touch, is large enough to do a u-shape here that's what i would strive for it may not be you may be really struggling and then in which case you're going to want to kind of pivot on your third finger and let your thumb come away exercise 12 side view i'm going to do it slowly so you can see the slight dip so we've got straight dip straight dip over quick crossover Exercise 13 for tremolos, rotations. Again, same techniques we've used through the book. Nice firm hand position. We're gonna be playing on the tips for this one. And I want you first, before you play it, let's just block the chords with the fingering. So first half of measure one, four, two, one, C chord. Then we've got a secondary dominant, E7, four, two, one, one, two, four, leading to the sixth chord, A minor. 3, 5, 1 in the left hand, 5, 2, 1 in the right hand. Then our two chord, D minor. Right hand will feel exactly the same. Left hand stretches out a little bit. We're going to squeeze in to a 1, 6, 4, C chord second inversion. 5, 2, 1, both hands. Then a G7, left hand spread out with an 
an octave, right hand has the seventh, and here. So this explores a chord progression as well as playing on the tips, as well as fingering. So as we've done throughout the book, we're going to have a big down, down, light, 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 reset. one when you are doing the switch make sure to keep the last note of the group down until you find the starting point of the next harmony so we have C you're gonna hold this down find the new position find the new position and this one's gonna be a big one if you can with the right hand reach that, that would be great. Tremolos, you're going to just stay in the keys. I'm only going to have you come off the keys when you switch harmonies. Otherwise, you're staying within the keys, not leaving the tops of them. Okay, here is the complete playthrough for set number 20. We will do both hands, starting with the right hand, then followed by the left hand, all repeats. And during some of the exercises, I may do one slow version, one quick one. It just depends on the exercise. Exercise one will be slow only. Exercise two for relaxation. Right hand all repeats. One more time. And left hand. Rolling through. One more time. Exercise three, right hand first, get set with the fifth. Exercise four. I'll do this one time slowly, one time quickly. Here's the slow one. We'll do one slow, one quick, with all repeats. So here's the slow version.
pretty fun when you're going fast. Okay, for trills, number six, we're gonna do again, first time through slowly, second time through quickly. Here we go with the slow one. notes one time we'll do straight and one time we'll do sideways here we go with the straight one first sideways left hand straight first sideways Number eight for double thirds, nice and slow, one tempo. Part two. Left hand, here we go. Exercise nine for the dominant seven. Right hand first, all repeats. Left hand, same thing. Exercise 10 for the five fingers. One time slow, one time quick. Here's the slow one, all repeats. Same thing, one slow, one fast. Left hand quick. For skips, you might not see all of them in this one. Here we go. And now the left hand. Number 12 for arpeggios, we're gonna do a medium tempo and we'll do all the repeats. Here we go, right hand first. hand same thing medium tempo Over. number 13 for tremolos we'll do one time slowly one time quickly here we go watching this tutorial and playthrough for Boris Berlin's Essential Daily Exercises for Piano. I think these are the best technical exercises they are, and I really appreciate your patience as I've taken a long time to post all 20 lessons. I hope that you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I also have lots of short tutorials on pieces from the repertoire and lots of technique stuff like scales, chord progressions, arpeggios, and so forth. Please write to me in the comments. I love to hear from you. And as always, thank you for watching.